Hercules was the greatest of the mythological Greek heroes. He was famous for his incredible strength, courage, and intelligence. Hercules is actually his Roman name. The Greeks called him Heracles. He was a demigod, actually, which means that he was half god and half human. His father was Zeus, the king of the gods, and his mother was Alcmene, a human. Hercules was very strong, even as a baby. When Hera, Zeus's wife, came to know of her husband's illegitimate child, she wanted to kill the baby. Hera sent two large snakes into the crib. The snakes slid towards the bed. The viper who was out in front stuck out his tongue and hissed. It reared its head. That was the last thing it did, because the boy shot out his hand and grabbed it by the neck. The other snake slid swiftly across the floor towards him, but the child grabbed that one too and began to shake it violently. The nurse heard the commotion and came rushing into the nursery, but it was too late for the snakes. Hercules had killed them both. Hercules grew into a fine teenager, and he was without doubt the strongest man on earth. One day, he met the Oracle of Delphi to get some advice. The Oracle told Hercules that he must serve King Eurystheus for ten years and do any task the king asked of him. Hercules obeyed and met King Eurystheus. The king was jealous of Hercules and did not like him at all. So the king gave Hercules twelve impossible tasks to do hoping that Hercules would fail. Task 1 Eurystheus told Hercules about a lion that was the cause of suffering in the land of Nemea. It was attacking not only animals, but people as well. Hercules' first task was to hunt and kill the Nemean lion. Hercules traveled to Nemea. The local people showed him in the direction of the lion's cave. When Hercules reached the cave, he hid behind a boulder and waited for the lion to come out. He waited and waited, but the lion didn't show up. When it was evening, the lion yawned and walked out of the cave. The Nemean lion had huge teeth and skin so tough that it could not be pierced by arrows. Everyone in the land of Nemea was scared of it. Many hunters had tried to kill the beast, but none had succeeded. Hercules took aim and shot an arrow. It flew towards the lion and caught it in the chest. But instead of piercing his skin, the arrow merely bounced off. The lion looked with curiosity at his bold attacker. Who was this fellow? No ordinary human for sure. Seeing that Heracles was as strong and fierce as himself, he decided to retreat into his cave. Hercules uprooted a tree and sealed the entrance so that the lion may not escape. Once he was inside the cave, he saw the gleaming green eyes of the lion waiting to attack him. The lion was strong, but Hercules was stronger. Hercules pounced on the lion. He grappled and wrestled with the man-eating beast and finally defeated it, killing it with his bare hands. And that's how Hercules completed his first task. If you have ever seen a picture of Hercules, you will know that he liked to wear a lion skin over his shoulders. And this was the skin of the Nemean lion.
King Eurystheus was not very happy when he saw Hercules walking into his palace wearing the lion skin. Hercules had completed his second labor by killing the Nemean lion. So this time, he decided to give Hercules a tougher task. Hercules was given the task to fight another terrible creature known as the Lernaean Hydra. The Hydra was a big snake, a very big one, and it had nine heads. Task 2. The Lernaean Hydra The king knew that anyone who approached the monster's den in the swamp would be killed by the snake's poisonous breath. Also, if anyone tried to cut off any of its heads, two more would grow in its place. The Hydra was indeed a fierce opponent. Even Hercules did not think he could fight this monster on his own. He enlisted the help of his nephew, Aeolus. Hercules was very clever too. When they reached the swamp, he could sense the poisonous air inside the den. They realized the danger and did not enter the den. They lured the monster out of the swamp instead. Hercules did not waste any time and he jumped into action. Hercules fought the Hydra fiercely and each time he chopped off one of its heads, Aeolus burned it before another set of heads sprouted out. Hercules and Aeolus clubbed off the monster's nine heads but one head refused to die. So Hercules crushed that head and buried it deep in the ground. He returned to Eurystheus with the news of his victory, but the king was not satisfied. You did not fight Hydra on your own, he said, and so the labor does not count. Hercules' next task was to bring the sacred deer of Artemis, which had iron feet and golden horns. Task 3. The Cyrenian Hind The Cyrenian Hind was not a beast like the Nemean lion or the Hydra. It was a noble creature with iron feet and golden horns that could outrun an arrow. The sacred hind belonged to Artemis, goddess of wilderness. Hercules set out to hunt down and capture the golden stag of Artemis. Hercules spent almost a year wandering the forest in search of the hind. Finally, one night, while the stag was sleeping, Hercules crept up to the sleeping animal and caught it by throwing a net over the sleeping animal. At once, Artemis appeared before Hercules. Even though Artemis was a goddess, she feared the strength of the son of Zeus. She brought Apollo her twin brother, along for moral support. Hercules apologized for his deeds. He then explained how he needed to capture the deer for completing the tasks given to him. Artemis consulted with her brother and agreed on a compromise. Hercules was allowed to take the sacred deer to Eurystheus alive, but then he must let it go. Hercules agreed. He returned to the city gates with the deer. He knew if the deer didn't return safely, Artemis would hurt him. So thinking fast, Hercules agreed to give the king the deer under one condition, that the king come outside the city gates and get the deer himself. The king agreed and arrived at the city gates. Just as the king was about to take the hind, Hercules let it go and the deer sprinted back to Artemis. Eurystheus was furious, but Hercules told the king that he was not fast enough, and that's why the hind escaped. And that's how mighty Hercules completed his third labor.